everybody and welcome to the casual wrestling community youtube channel you are now tuned in to the raw take weekly monday night raw recap show i am your host the notorious nerdy d and i am joined tonight by the love of my life mrs level up lauren up y'all whether you're watching us on youtube or listening on your favorite podcast network we have an amazing show for you tonight make sure to stop right now and hit that like button and leave us a comment wherever you are consuming this content a lot to unpack this uh week on the raw take but first let's talk about your boy is still the cwc premium live event world champion going i believe i went five and two yes in the new format of the snake draft choices where we're forced into certain choices i still came out over 50 percent. that is very true. i still came out your world champion i was so sure i was gonna win i nailed i mean i nailed some of those yeah <laughs> you nailed literally the first five I mean, yeah, I, I was like five and zero oh up until the end, right? It was the last two, mm-hmm. but I knew, I knew I was losing the theory, and I was you pretty had to confident know Cody that, was going to win. Yeah, I was pretty confident that Cody was going to win. But that leads us to the biggest story this week is, uh, or the biggest story of wrestling in general is Cody Rhodes wrestling with a torn pectoral muscle at Hell in the Cell, right? Yeah. Big deal. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's been talking about it for the last three or four days. I'm not going to do the same shtick and tell everybody like how impressive it is that Cody Rhodes, because it was literally one of the coolest things I've ever seen in professional wrestling. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to break it down in that direction. It's been done. It's been beat. Everybody's talked about it. I'm going to talk about it in a little different way. What I want to talk about this week is nobody's talking about That torn pectoral muscle, I believe, saved the entire premium live event. I I believe that that was a soft card going into that event. When you look at those seven matches, and and even after, like, if you break break the premium live event apart, it wasn't, like, it was pretty cut and dry. There wasn't just a ton of entertainment in that premium live event. The triple threat match, Bianca, Becky, Asuka, great. Great opener. Hell of a match. Very good. All about it. Had no problem with it, right? Then we go to Omos and Lashley. Fucking terrible. That was a terrible match. Just everything about that story was terrible. I I hated it. (laughs) I'm glad it's over. Uh, Owens and and Zeke, fun, predictable. We knew what was going to, like, like, I didn't know who was going to win the match, but we knew exactly that it was going to, it was going to be Kevin Owens yelling at Ezekiel the entire match. And, and I it was still one of the better matches of the night, but nothing just overly entertaining about it. Then you had the judgment day, which was just a fucking mess. It's a fucking mess that, that the next night turned into a dumpster fire. And we'll get to that when we get to raw takes, but that wasn't anything to just go nuts about Corbin madcap. It was exactly what you expected it to be. It was the end of their little story they had going on. And we knew after Madcap got his new character and knew everything that Madcap was going over. And this was just going to be a a closing to a story where Madcap finally got his vengeance. Same with Austin Theory, or it's only Theory now. Same with Theory and Mustafa. Mustafa was only there to try and get Theory some heat. And we knew Theory was going to win that match. And that leaves you with Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins, which definitely stole the fucking show. Like we, we enjoyed it. Our household was fucking hyped for the match and it was exciting. And when he pulled the jacket off and the bruising and the theatrics and all that shit, it, it was, it was fucking great. Right. But like, really look at that card, go back and look at that card. No Roman Reigns, no Usos, no Ronda Rousey, no Riddle, no Randy Orton. There's a lot of big names left on that left off that card that usually are there to pick up that middleweight. That middleweight. WWE's been doing good with the main events. Uh, the Charlotte Ronda was a fucking hit. The Cody Seth a fucking hit. The problem is, is that middle of the card is getting mushy, and and, and this one was no different. And I think without the theatrics of the torn pectoral muscle, I don't know what the plan was for that match, but that. That added a level of excitement to that match that just, like, it took it over the top. People were talking about it. We were talking about it, right? Mm-hmm. <sighs> but what people aren't talking about enough is, is the next night on Monday Night Raw, 
Cody Rhodes came out and cut a very good promo, an extremely good promo. But there was a piece of that where he said some things that I feel like everybody just kind of glossed over because of all of the reports that are claiming otherwise. And what he said was there was, there was a moment in that promo where he talked about what if I show up at money in the bank and I win that briefcase and not enough people are talking about that because WWE.com and and all of these dirt sheets are reporting that Cody's out six months. He's going to have surgery. He's out for six months. He'll be back around Royal rumble. But what if, what if, what if there's a chance for some reason, Cody Rhodes puts off surgery and he just waits it out and he goes, fuck it. I'll do it one more time. And he goes to money in the bank and he shows up at money in the bank and he wins the briefcase. Then he rides off in the sunset, gets his surgery and he knows I can take six months with everybody knowing I'm holding this briefcase and I have a title opportunity at some point. What if, what if Cody does that or B here's a shocker. What if, what if he's not really as hurt as, as everybody's saying he is? What, I mean, just what if? I'm not saying he's faking. You can't fake that shit. There's blood running down his fucking arm. But we don't know the extent of the injury. Like, if something looks bad, they could go, oh, we can sell this. We can package this up. What if Cody doesn't need surgery, right? Yeah. What if, what if he just needs four weeks to recover? To, to get good enough to perform at money in the bank. I'm not saying this is happening more than likely WWE is telling the truth. He's going to get surgery. He'll be out for six months. But what if, what if, yeah, what if he surprises and shows up at money in the bank and wins, wins the briefcase, both unlikely, both extremely unlikely, but you know what I've noticed? Cody Rhodes kind of gets to do what Cody Rhodes wants to do. And it feels like that money in the bank is, is fairly important to Cody Rhodes I know, man, it's just possible that the injury isn't as bad as it's being reported. Not faking. I'm not saying he's faking. I'm not saying there was any makeup involved. I'm not saying any of that. I don't know what a torn pectoral muscle. I don't know what the difference in in the looks of a torn pectoral muscle and, and, you know, and a fully removed pectoral muscle. I don't know. Is it possible that it wasn't as bad as they said? And you, what leads me to this, this thought line is, if, if it was really torn off the bone, right? It's, it's mm-hmm. as fucked up as they say it is. Was all the shit on Monday Night Raw really necessary? Like, after he just did his thing at Hell in the Cell and went through all that pain, do we literally... Like, they literally let Seth Rollins poke him with a stick. Yeah. Like, is that necessary? Like, I don't feel like Seth Rollins coming back to attack Cody again was necessary unless you go, like... You know, maybe he's not as hurt as, as as we fucking thought originally, or maybe he's not as hurt as they're leading us to believe, and this is all a play to get him back by money in the bank. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. What I do know is that it looks to me like WWE 100% has overreacted to whatever this is by turning the judgment day against Edge this past Monday Night Raw. What? Where the fuck did that come from? I have no idea. What? Somebody please explain to me how this benefits anybody in this situation. Anybody. Edge included. Finn Balor included. What is this? This is the booking that I can't defend with WWE. Like, if this was... I've heard numerous different reports. But if this was about needing another face, needing another good guy... You've got plenty of those on the roster. You've got plenty of those that don't have anything to do right now who could step up and fill that baby face role. We could, let's just move AJ Styles and and just elevate him up and let's like give him some real shit to do, right? Mm -hmm. Let's take Drew McIntyre who has absolutely nothing to do on SmackDown and let's just bring him back to Raw and let him do the Drew McIntyre thing. He's one of the biggest stars in WWE. You've got fucking Riddle, who they seem to be absolutely confused what to do with Riddle now. You know, they have these big plans where they booked themselves into, like, we thought we were getting Riddle and Roman, and now it looks like they're going to protect Riddle. I don't... WWE right now, they're in they're in a weird position, I feel like, because I feel like they're in a stay afloat position. You've got to just keep the boat floating. A lot of your big stars are MIA, injured, missing, Big E, Big E's out with a broken neck, you can't rely on him, Randy Orton, don't know if it's work, 
Don't know if it's a shoot, but they're telling us Randy Orton's hurt, possibly never coming back. Cody Rhodes, once again, the arm looked fucked up. They're saying six months. Let's assume he's out six months. That's a long time without a bunch of these major stars. We're also getting reports <clears throat> that WWE has no intention to bring Roman Reigns back for money in the bank. That now he'll be two premium live events out of the title picture. And you know what this problem with this is? What? The problem with this is WWE doesn't have a major championship right now on television to elevate one of these other guys with. You put a title on AJ Styles, WWE championship, you immediately elevate him up to the top, right? You put a title on Drew McIntyre, you immediately elevate him up high. You put a title on Riddle and the crowd starts to take Riddle seriously. But you, you don't have this. If Roman Reigns is going to go MIA for two, two fucking months, you don't have any titles to put on anybody. True. And, and the other problem is, is when I start looking at what's left on Monday Night Raw outside of Seth Rollins, who puts fucking asses in the seats? Because it's great. Like, you have a lot of young talent. There's a lot to work with on Monday Night Raw, but you have to have the names that you can put up on the marquee that put the butts in the seats and sell the tickets. And when I look at Monday Night Raw, I don't know who is that person. Mm -hmm. Now, you got John Cena coming back when they hit Laredo, which is in a couple weeks. That's great. Perfect timing. Couldn't be better. But how long is Johnny sticking around? Because I'm yeah, i watching Peacemaker. I'm watching Peacemaker on HBO right now. He's fucking great. He's a he's a good actor. He's funny. He's good at what he does. He's Hollywood. So he's not he's not back for a long time. Maybe the summer, which they need him. Like they they can only pray that he's back for the summer. Mm -hmm. Do you pick up Do you pick up that red phone? Do you call Brock Lesnar at this point? Do you go Brock? We fucked. I know we fucked you up at, at WrestleMania, but we need you to do a, a 360. Just come back and and just come back and start smashing people. Because Brock Lesnar puts asses in the seats. Yeah, that's what he does. Brock Lesnar's an attraction, and people come to see Brock Lesnar. It's not the Judgment Day. The Judgment Day aren't putting asses in the seats, especially minus Edge. Sure. Without Edge, the Judgment Day, they they get. They lose momentum. They become a mid-card nightmare for me. And now they have to prove themselves why we should pay attention. Why should we pay attention? Because without Edge, now there's a lot of proving. You've taken, you've taken the one guy who really had the credibility and you removed him from the group. And now you have, after two months, you have three superstars, two of them, Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest, who literally came into the group because of Edge. They came in because of Edge. True. And now they're getting rid of him. And now you insert Finn Balor and everybody's going Finn Balor's the leader. But it sounded like to me that this is going to be one of those fucking groups where there is no leader. Now I've heard, flop. I've heard Edge was upset with the whole group in general because all of a sudden it went from like a superiority group to like this, like, uh, they wanted to give them like a spooky feel and Edge didn't really want them to be spooky. He didn't want them to feel like elemental. Yeah. Or like, uh, what is the word I'm looking wizards? for? Wizards? Not, like, not wizards, but like, what is... Uh, Fanatical? Uh, like, uh, whimsical? fantasy. Like, they have powers and stuff. Oh. I guess. And I guess that's the way they're going to take the group, possibly. I don't know. Edge by himself as a babyface, I don't think he still sells tickets. Especially not, like, immediately just dropping him out of the Judgment Day. He's going to need time to rebuild up. So, I don't know. What is he now? That's my question. So, right? I mean, the, I guess he's a babyface. I, I mean, why else do you do it if you don't need somebody to play babyface? Because I, I don't think he's going to be a heel. Mm -hmm. And then I play fantasy booking in my head and I go, well, what if, you know, Bray Wyatt has changed his name from Rotunda to Wyatt on Twitter, which he could just be trolling the entire world. Probably what he's doing is he does it very good. But uh, let's say Bray Wyatt comes back. Could you align... Bray Wyatt and Edge together and create some kind of, like, I'm not calling them the Wyatt family 2.0, but so another group that pairs up well with the Judgment Day, and we're not far from Survivor Series, and you could build to a team versus team type situation with, like, Edge, Bray Wyatt, somebody else on that other side. Mm -hmm. I mean, I even thought, like, crazy fucking booking. If Bianca's going to be thrown in with Rhea Ripley, what if you did Edge, Bianca, and Bray Wyatt? Might be a fun, different thing. Who True. knows? Because Bianca needs something. She's going to need something. And I'm hoping this Rhea Ripley thing is, is what she needs. But I'm not going to hit the panic button. I'm not panicking yet. Because 
Like there, there could be plans in place to do something that this could all be a big plan and I'm not going to overreact. I'm going to give them a couple weeks to see where it's going. But like WWE is going to have to, they got to figure some things out. There's, there's things that are going to have to be put into place. Monday night raw next week will be interesting. Money in the bank will be extremely interesting because with no Roman reigns, who's the main event? Yeah. True. Who's Rhonda? I guess you could go Rhonda again, but it doesn't feel like they have enough. They don't have enough against Rhonda right now on that side of things for her to really like what you can't go Raquel Rodriguez and Rhonda. No, who won the battle Royal Natalia, right? That's not a main event match. Ronda Rousey and Natalia is not a main event match. No, not at all. Uh, I, I did read the cliff notes of AEW this week. No mention of MJF. He yeah. did not win that battle Royal. Uh, O'Reilly won the battle Royal who went on to take on Moxley, who went on Moxley went on to win. So Moxley's you're going to be your new interim AEW champion. Like all right. 90% chance. Interesting. Uh, let's get into some raw takes. <clears throat> let's talk about Monday night raw. So excuse me. I take a drink of water. I wanted Becky Lynch to win the 24 seven title so bad. I wanted her to win it so bad. I would have loved to have seen Becky Lynch win the 24 seven title and go on this major like year long run where she's just squashing all of the extra talent, squashing our truth, squashing uh, Dana Brooks, squashing uh, what would well, Tamina, all these people just one after another, bringing them out and just beating the life out of them and being like the, the champion of the misfits and continuing to just like <laughs> her ego, just inflate and inflate and inflate and really like put emphasis on the 24 seven championship and let her like run away with that title. Yeah. I th- that would have been a fun angle. Instead we get Oscar cheating, which means after hell in the cell, we're going to get the feud of Oscar and Becky Lynch that we should have just got prior to that. Instead, we made it to triple H made no sense. I, I mean the triple threat. It's a triple H Weird. triple threat, a triple threat match. I just, I let's go. Let's make Becky Lynch a 24 seven champion. I'm all about that. That would have been awesome, man. <clears throat> so riddles booking riddle has been booked. So confusing to me coming out of the, and maybe he's going to get his bigger push on SmackDown, but coming out of the title unification match, I really felt like riddle had the most momentum, even though the Usos won the belts, Randy disappearing, riddle kind of like on this vengeance quest to get revenge and, and, uh, and avenge, Randy Orton, it really felt good. And then now all of a sudden now riddles in the ring with the Miz. And it it looks like maybe we're getting something with riddle in the Miz. And then all of a sudden Choppa comes out of nowhere and and smacks the shit out of them. Yeah. I don't like, I don't, the the booking is so confusing with riddle. What are we doing with, with riddle or are we going to put him in a position to prove himself against Randy Orton? Or is he going to be relegated back to the mid card where he's going to be fighting people like Choppa and, and in the Miz? I, I don't know. Just a side note, did watch a documentary on the WWE Network about Choppa. Cool dude. Nothing what I expected. Like a hard working, just like good guy. Fun to watch. Like you should, you need to watch it. It was, it's worth watching. It's like 30 minutes long. I like these WWE documentaries that are like 30 minutes long. Me that too. just kind of document like small pieces of people's life. But you get to kind of pull the curtain back and see more about who they really are. So uh, speaking of like, I said, the riddle situation's weird. The street profits are, they're finally look like they're going to get their opportunity against the Usos, Mm -hmm. which means that like riddles kind of out of that entire situation. The problem right now with the bloodline holding on to all of these belts, it was really cool. It made for some really cool moments, but what it's become is extremely predictable, right? It's going to take a massive storyline to dethrone Roman Reigns and the Usos And I don't think the Street Profits are those guys. Like, I don't think this is the buildup that we're looking for to knock the Usos off. There's going to have to be, like, epic things that happen. So for now, we're just looking at, like, who's the next team up to lose to the Usos? Hopefully we get some quality wrestling out of it. But but it's going to be extremely predictable until, uh, until it looks like there's a legitimate team with legitimate reason. And I think that's, I mean, if Randy comes back, it's gotta be team RK bro. Like, I I feel like that's who it has to be. But, but for now, I don't think the street profits are those guys. I don't, what do you think? I mean, I don't, I don't believe that they're going to take the belts off of them. No, I don't think so either. I think they're, they're for lack of a better word, just like filler entertainment. I think they're good. 
I think they're good at no, what they do. No, I think that they're awesome. Them, I wouldn't call it the entertainment, but but I'm I know where you're going with that. But they're it's not, not like it's not. Meant they're to not be... the guys. They're not. You're not that guy. Yeah. You're not that guy. They're not that guy. Uh, Veer Mahan. So Veer Mahan went from squashing every fucking person in front of him. Didn't matter who it was. Veer Mahan was going to beat the life out of him. <laughs> so now he's having like 25 minute matches with Dominic Mysterio, or yeah. that's how long it feels because it was absolutely didn't make any fucking sense. And I'm also tired. I am tired of Rey Mysterio being booked as a face, as a baby face, when all he does is get involved in fucking Dominic's matches and, and cause uh, interference and, and disqualifications. And, and he just like, take, look, Dominic Mysterio is booked like a little bitch. Like, that's what he is. He is a little bitch. And I don't think at this point, I don't know if there's anything they can do to change my mind. Dominic Mysterio is a little bitch, and his daddy has to jump in a ring all of the time and save him. And that's what his character is. That is his gimmick. Dominic Mysterio's gimmick is he's a little bitch that daddy has to jump in the ring and save. And that's that's what it is. They can't change my mind at this point. They booked themselves into a fucking corner with Dominic Mysterio. And, and honestly... I could care less, but they keep putting him on my fucking television every Monday. <laughs> oh, Lauren, the, yes, the, the problem, the problem I have. Yes. And, and I didn't think this was going to be a problem. I was so happy for Bobby Lashley and Omos to be over. And then I realized watching Monday Night Raw that Bobby Lashley and Omos being over means that I have to see a segment with Bobby Lashley and I have to see a segment with Omos separately. So now they, ah. fill, they fill up two segments on Monday Night Raw that I have to sit through. And, and they're just absolutely boring. That's and true. I'm hoping, like, I'm still crossing my fingers that Bobby Lashley gets that momentum back. But throwing him in the ring with theory, I don't, like, okay, what are we doing? Because like, no, I don't have a ton of interest in seeing Omos and, uh, or Bobby Lashley in theory. I have zero interest in watching Omos just stumble around the ring and no sell. So, like, it's weird booking to me. Unless... Unless, like, they're just going to feed Bobby Lashley to, to Theory to put him over even more. You think so? I, I don't know. Like, this, they need to do something. I feel like they like to keep Bobby as, like, the big strong man. I did, though. too. I thought Bobby was, like, the number two baby face on Monday Night Raw. And so, if he fucking, if he just kills this momentum that Theory has, what are we doing? What are we doing? I'm no. telling you, I, I'm just, like, I'm biding my time. I'm being patient. I'm not going to shit all over Monday Night Raw yet. But yeah. I feel it coming. Yeah, for I sure. feel like I, I feel like we are in the clusterfuck era. We've been through the attitude era, the golden era, the uh, the reality era. I feel like we're we possibly could be entering the clusterfuck era. <laughs> but the main event was a fatal four way match. It was. And that was a solid main event. Once again, WWE getting the main events right. That's what they're doing. It's what's yeah. saving them because you're I always think it's better if you get the main event right. and The rest of the show was a little fucked up. As long as you leave with like a good taste in your mouth, you you survive till the next week. I, so I liked the main event. I mm -hmm. liked Liv Morgan. I liked Alexa Bliss. It looks like they have chemistry together. They worked a lot together in the match. I'm going to go out on a limb, make a prediction. We got a new tag team coming. We got a new tag team that's going to be Liv Morgan, Alexa Bliss, and, and some some form of fashion. I don't know what the fuck happened to the uh, women's tag team tournament. That thing just fucking disappeared. Yeah. Like they talked about that, like that was going to be a thing and we're going to bring NXT teams in and it's just fucking gone. It's kind of so what let's they do just, lately. Well, let's just get like, let's just have a match then to, to make tag team champions and let's not have the fucking vacant character carrying those belts around. <laughs> but I'm all in on this Rihanna, or Rihanna, this Rhea and Bianca thing. I'm all in. I'm sold on this. This looks like a match that I could watch. I've been saying for a long time that I think there's something there. The chemistry between Bianca and Rhea Ripley is is extremely good. It's a believable seeing, fight. And seeing the uh, the Judgment Day all stare down Bianca, it, it opens up some doors. Is she going to walk this road alone? Is she going to walk this road with Edge? I Man, I made a, a wild-ass prediction that maybe Bray Wyatt comes back to help Bianca Belair. Who knows? But this is interesting. This is going to be interesting. I, I don't know. It's unexpected. It's exciting. And that may be the best thing. That may be the best thing going on Monday Night Raw is, is the not knowing what they're going to do. Maybe that's the main event of uh, Money in the Bank. Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair. Ah, does it sell tickets? Does that sell tickets? I don't think so. I don't think it sells tickets. I think it's a hell of a match. I'll yeah. be excited. I'll be extremely excited for that match. But I don't know if it sells tickets. All right, that leads me to my power rankings for this week. Uh, my power rankings for this week, 
I'm going to go back to doing Raw versus SmackDown and okay. just uh, rank them. If they appear on Monday Night Raw, they're eligible for the Monday Night Raw list. If you appear on SmackDown, you're eligible for SmackDown, which means the Usos will be on every list you could fucking make because they're all over the place and yes, they're the they hardest, are. hardest working motherfuckers in wrestling. Uh-huh. Hands down. Let's go. Number 10, Bobby Lashley. I don't love him, but he's still kind of a force to be reckoned with. He comes out looking good of, out of the Omos feud, and it looks like we're going to get him in theory, so he'll be on your television a lot more. Bobby Lashley's number 10. Number 9, the Street Profits. Uh, like they're next up for the Usos and, and they're exciting to watch every time they're in the ring. There is excitement. Montez Ford, I still believe could be a hell of a single superstar. If they ever just pulled that trigger, unfortunately for Angelo Dawkins, I don't know what the fuck that means. If he doesn't have Montez, uh, working with him. nothing against Angelo. Angelo's solid, solid wrestler, but Montez has the it. Yeah, definitely. That's literally what I was going to say. Number eight, Alexa bliss. Uh, this fatal four way didn't do her any favors, uh, you know, losing the match to, to Rhea Ripley. Yeah. So just kind of puts her in a holding period. I'm, you know, I predicted that we get her and Liv Morgan in some kind of tag team, possibly a tag team title run would be nice. But, uh, that character, man, she's over with the crowd. So they're going to have to figure out something to do to keep her, keep her on the TV screen and keep her entertaining. Definitely. Number seven, Ezekiel. Even with the loss, Ezekiel is still one of the most entertaining things on Monday Night Raw. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he didn't have his little tassel things on. He didn't have the Macho Man streamers, which uh, no, like I didn't love. I didn't love that they've dropped that from the character. Uh, number six, I have Becky Lynch. Now that she's out of the title picture, we can finally start sliding her down this this power rankings. And not that I want to. She's fine. I love Becky Lynch, but I think like I think we just need a cool down. Unless she wins the 24 7 title, then I'm fucking elevating her to number one. And then she'll be right back at the top. Number five, after being I think he was two on my list one week and three on my list one week. Riddle is number five. And that's because I think WWE has no fucking clue what to do with Riddle. At this point, I don't think they know what to do with Riddle. I think they're confused. I think that their initial plan was to feed him to Roman Reigns, and then he got over with the crowd, and WWE panicked, and they they went, "We will. What's the purpose of feeding him to the crowd? Let's build him up." And so I think they're gonna they're gonna slow play him and let him uh, let him work with the Miz. He can build up some uh, momentum there. Let him work with Choppa. Let him build some momentum there. Don't know what's going on with Choppa still. Still don't understand it. Choppa's just out here beating people up. I like it though. Uh, number four is the Usos. As far as Monday Night Raw is concerned, they, they keep getting stuck in the middle of the card and they just fucking, they do their thing and there's nothing wrong with that. They're holding down SmackDown, but they're coming back to Monday Night Raw and just filling out the card. So mm-hmm. shout out to them. I still said they're the hardest working, like hardest working tag team in, in WWE. I'm not going to say pro we wrestling. Watched them the other day. And they were walking off and they just picked up like all 72 of their belts and yeah, walked off. I mean, they, that they was they so just, cool. The visuals you get with the Usos are great, like holding mm-hmm. all the belts and stuff, but it has stifled the tag team division. There's no doubt about that. Number three is the judgment day. Now I know I talk some shit about it, but it's still relevant, right? Yeah. We still like, I'm going to tune in next week to see where are we going with this? What Finn Balor, Damian priest, Rhea Who's Ripley, what team? like, you know, that's, that's a solid core but I call it like it's a mid card. It's a mid card team until they prove otherwise Mm -hmm. until they do something. Edge was the main event. Edge was the big boy. He was daddy of the group. So until they do something to prove otherwise, that's a mid card. That's a mid card crew. And we'll, we'll see if they can prove themselves and move up the list. Cause if not, Mm -hmm. they they will drop down this list quickly. Yes, sir. Number two, Seth Rollins, right? Mm -hmm. Seth doing Seth. Seth does Seth best. Seth comes out after third consecutive loss. And I said, you can't talk your way out of this one, Seth. You can't. Mm-hmm. Three losses in a row. You're fucked. You're done. He comes out. He talks. His, you know, he shakes Cody's hand. He's going to be the bigger man. He's the good guy. And we all thought we were watching that. We were all like, that's awesome. That's I know, awesome. I did think that. Shout out to shout out to Seth being the bigger man. How mature is that? That's what I had thought. Walks to the back. Cody's walk. Here comes fucking Seth Rollins with a sledgehammer. Doing nope. Seth Rollins type things, beats the life out of uh, Cody Rhodes there, and and possibly ends uh, you know six months on the sidelines for Cody Rhodes. Seth Rollins is my number two, probably be number one next week, but number one possibly for the final week is Cody Rhodes. If he's truly injured, not for six weeks, he'll drop off the list fast. No, we'll forget about him. 
it's sad the way wrestling works, right? Two weeks from now, we won't be talking about Cody if there's no signs of Cody. But, you know, last one wanted to give him his due. That match at Hell in the Cell, fucking epic. That 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 fucking gnarly ass wound mm-hmm. that we can that we call it a wound on his arm, whatever that was. Shout out to him. He's he's number one for probably the final week for a while until he comes back six months from now or at Money in the Bank. What I'm predicting. Yeah. Uh, make sure to tune in this Sunday for the Casual Smack Show on the Casual Wrestling Community YouTube page. We are putting together another show with a couple friends of ours to look out for that. Uh-huh. Uh, anything else? You got anything else you want to throw in here? Mm, no. Not That's right it. now. That's it. I'm excited That's for it. SmackDown this week. Excited for SmackDown this week. See some more of the Usos. Probably not going to see any Roman Reigns. Uh, see some more Mad Cat Moss. Oh, he's not Mad Cat Moss anymore. They changed his name. Yeah. What was that again? He's just Mad Cat. Oh, no. I would have gone with Moss. Moss? Just Moss. Moss. Mossley. Madcap. I don't know what the Madcap reference is. It's weird. Like a big liar? Is that what like that means? Cap, cap in? Oh, I don't think, I don't think they're that That looked look too I don't think far into that. that. It's probably something to do with comedy. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, who knows? This has been another episode of the Raw Take Show. As always, I am the notorious nerdy D, the champion. Yeah. Raise my title we'll up. That is Level Up Lauren, and you can ring the final bell. Ding, 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 ding. Step in the ring, 